what would Bitcoin Core version 1 look like? Andreas, I believe that Satoshi first ran Bitcoin D version 0.1. With all of the years of development so far, any ideas what Bitcoin Core version 1.0 could possibly look like? You know, right now we are at uh, 0.17. And I don't know of any plans to move from the subversion numbering to a 1.0 version anytime soon. If you think about it, this could be a 140-year currency uh, or 130-year currency. So therefore, you know, we have uh, an issuance horizon that is extremely long. This is still something that is uh, being modified heavily all the time. Um, I think that, uh, as we see in one of the comments from Colin, uh, releasing a 1.0 could and would be interpreted wrongly by many. Uh, I agree with that. I don't think there's any point in doing that, and I don't see any speculation as to what a version 1 would look like or when. Anyone would be confident enough to say, we're past the experimental phase, this is in um, full-blown global production and is ready for the world. Um, that's a very audacious thing to say when you're building the next generation money. Briz asks, catastrophe, what would happen if all the Bitcoin developers and project maintainers disappeared? Say every Bitcoin developer and project maintainer that has commit access was on the same cruise ship, and it blew up and sank with everyone in it. What would happen to Core? Would Bitcoin just march on, but without any new developers? Would it turn into an epic battle of the forks? A gruesome thought, but just curious if something happened catastrophic to key individuals, how would Bitcoin survive? Well, first of all, if all the Bitcoin developers and project maintainers were on the same cruise ship, the more likely thing would be... Um, some kind of uh, uh, gastrointestinal disease would take them all out, rather than the ship sinking. Also, I would be very uh, strongly questioning their taste uh, and choices, uh, because uh, cruise ships suck. Uh, they're floating hotels that make you seasick and give you food poisoning, and you can't leave. Um, did I mention I hate cruise ships? All right, never mind. Let's go back to the theoretical catastrophe. Let's say something happens to a, a, a big number of uh, Bitcoin developers. And you can also turn this around and say, uh, why wouldn't a state actor attack Bitcoin developers, uh, imprison them, um, force them, coerce them into not contributing anymore, uh, or worse? Um, and, and the reason is that once you understand how open source communities work, first of all, Bitcoin Core is not the only uh, client out there. Um, there are multiple implementations of the Bitcoin Core protocol that are interchangeable and compatible. Uh, C++ implementation called LeBitcoin, for example, uh, which was a project started by Amir Taki and continued by a number of very talented developers today. Uh, Bcoin, uh, which is a uh, JavaScript node implementation of the Bitcoin protocol, full node, which is uh, multi-threaded, compartmentalized, uh, modular, and highly performant, uh, created by JJ and uh, a bunch of other developers who started out uh, at uh, purse.io. Um, there are uh, there's BTCD, which is a Go implementation in the Go language, and in in fact, you know, most likely uh, rather than a battle of the forks, I think what you'd see is you'd see other clients uh, becoming more prominent if uh, Bitcoin was no longer developed in the core uh, Bitcoin core package uh, was no longer maintained and developed. Other packages, uh, other implementations of the Node software, which did implement new features, would become more prominent. Um, also, you've got to realize that we're talking about a very large number of developers. Um, there are probably uh, three or four hundred people who contribute um, to Bitcoin at least once a year uh, in various projects. And although there are you know, a, a dozen or so who are very prominent and do a lot of the work, um, that doesn't mean that other people couldn't step up. Uh, so this would create a, a vacuum, and the vacuum would be filled by other people stepping up. 
and taking a more prominent role. People who have been learning gradually uh, in these various projects. So essentially, nothing would happen. Um, the project would continue. There is uh, enough interest. There are enough trained developers. There are enough people who could learn very quickly, and who would be very interested in taking a greater role in a project like that. And quite honestly, would see an opportunity um, to contribute more strongly. Um, you know, it, it is quite intimidating when you have all of these world-class cryptographers, mathematicians, and developers. Um, that you think, oh, my little contribution is going to be laughed at. Mine certainly have been laughed at, uh, and that's okay. But um, but the bottom line is, uh, there are many, many, many talented people who lurk in the shadows and are not necessarily contributing at the moment, but would step up uh, quite easily. Nothing would happen to the project, which is also why there's absolutely no point in coercing uh, or imprisoning or um, worse, any of the developers, because um, there is no center, there is no irreplaceable individual, there is no uh, central point of failure. Uh, this is a recipe, and there are many cooks who can cook this recipe, uh, and who can continue to enhance and improve this recipe. And you can't stop a recipe by taking out some of the cooks.